What was it like for you two, at least, knowing that this, I don't know if it was the last day of shooting on Descendants 3 or if it's maybe during the press for it or maybe the premiere day, that it's finally hits you that, okay, this journey we've been on oh, is over. <laughs> Um, I mean, what are your thoughts knowing that this, is, in a lot of ways, changed your life, that this oh, totally. journey is I over. remember on, it wasn't even the last day of filming, but we were shooting the last scene. Mm -hmm. And I literally could not say the words. No. <laughs> I yeah. literally oh. couldn't say it. It was, that was a... I think we were all inc incredibly yeah. emotional. Yeah, and it came by surprise. To, it was Total surprise. surprise. Was, Booba was no the idea. most emotional. You were, yeah, actually. I, I, no, I mean, it was really beautiful. Was. I mean, he like, just, something hit him, and it was so beautiful. Yeah. And he tried so hard really not could. to quit, <laughs> oh, no. but he couldn't get the words yeah, out, and he was shaking, the and the cameras were rolling, and the, you was remember that? It was in the tunnel. Yeah, was, in the tunnel. Yes. Yeah. It was like li literally the last. And that got me. That got yeah. me because yeah. when I like, oh, you, you were don't all cut. A mess. I cry every day five times a day, <laughs> and I come into. He's like, it's true. I come into wherever the cast is, and I'm like, you guys, and they're like, okay, sit down. What's happening? But like, he doesn't cry, and so no, when I saw him crying, I was like. Come here. But horrible. You're, you're talking so about horrible. the last scene, that yeah. last yeah, yeah. money shot. And it's a and it's a very special <laughs> scene. Special. You know, it kind of really does perfectly wrap it all up. Mm -hmm. And and I think that it just got very real because the scene was very real. Yeah. And and uh, and it and it grabbed them as people. You also, know? it wasn't. It wasn't scripted. in the script. Yeah. No. That was something we talked about. Yeah, yeah. We picked up the telephone and called the writers. And we explained something that came from the hearts of the four principal actors, and and they said, "Do it, shoot it." That was day of that yeah. these calls mm -hmm. were made. Yeah, now, yeah. what hit you guys that you all decided, you know what, we'd like to do something different that's not in this script to end this trilogy we've in this journey we've been on. It was actually, I think, it started by something very silly. Um, we we noticed that in the third film there was no rotten to the core line. <laughs> oh, that's what I'm right. We were, it was um, oh, yeah. in the first two films. We're always that's like, right. we're rotten to the core, and <laughs> yeah, it always makes it's us laugh. Thing, you know, yeah. <laughs> and it's, it was something that was so like that's we would say it even when we weren't doing the film to make each other laugh. You know, yeah. um, and and. We noticed we didn't have that in this one. We, we also cheated. came running up to me with like such drama. <laughs> we were like, there's we no run to the core line. We've just noticed. Yeah, we, have, we can't end the movie yeah. like this. It was. It was yeah. like, and they were, and I was like, I get it. I hear you. You're right. Yes. Yeah. So we picked up the phone and we called Josie and Sarah. Yeah. And they gave us some input mm -hmm. and we put it on its feet. And it became more emotional as we did it, yeah. though. It became more of like a goodbye <laughs> kind was. of moment yeah. than anything else. Yeah, absolutely. How have your lives changed over the past five years? So much. I mean, yeah, it's like, where do you start? I, yeah. I, I, I don't even know. I mean, it's, I have an extended family now. And yeah, I don't know, just being able to influence and tap into the creative side for young people is like such a cool thing, um, especially with our movies, The Descendants, you know. Little kids, you know, they watch this movie and it makes them want to dance, it makes them want to sing, mm -hmm. it makes them, it really, you know, makes you want to like get out and explore being creative and that's such a cool thing. Like, I don't, if it wasn't for music and art and acting and movies, I don't know what I'd, like literally, you know, like what would we be doing? So the fact that we get to bring that into the homes of, and into the minds of like young people, I think that is just like little kids, like that's, Singular and special. Yeah, that's amazing. And, and Delvin, I'll let you answer this as well, but when can you remember a moment over the past five years? And it might have been after the first film came out, but a moment where something might have happened that you go, whoa, this is a big deal. <laughs> that you realize just how big the sentence was. Oh, I feel like there's, I've had like a number of those <laughs> just because it's been, so, it, was a, it was a bit of like an overnight um, noticing mm -hmm. because I, I signed on early for the first move for the first movie and we did this um it was like an internal product thing do you remember that thing yeah. that we did with like the big screen for all of disney and all of um like hasbro right oh, wow. and it was way before filming even started and i like you know got all done up i didn't really know what i was doing and it was me and kenny and gary and Parison, who was our costumer mm -hmm. um our incredible costumer um and we sat on this panel with this big like screen behind us and they showed us all of the renderings of the castle and the dragon and and I knew nothing about this movie and I just remember looking out at this like sea of people because we were in what looked like kind of a movie theater mm. and all these all these people that were going to do so much work on this film and and looking behind me at all this work that had already been done and I was like oh this is 
so well, much like six, bigger than 600 I. 600 company people <laughs> sitting in the theater Ooh. from every department kind of said to you, I think they're going to make a big deal out of this. <laughs> yeah. Right? <laughs> I remember, like, and you sat down, and you, I think you were like, so you made a speech, and Gary made a speech, and I was like this, like, tag along, like I'd stow away oh. in someone's suitcase, and I was like, what's going on around me? And so then I think I knew it was going to be really big, mm. and I might have even come up to you and been like, this is, this is really big. Um, and then I, I think another time that really stood out to me was, um, I mean, when we got our numbers back, that was kind of shocking. We were all surprised, mm. I think, at, at how much the fans really, really liked it. Um, but I think when I landed in Japan mm. with Sophia to do mm. press on the second film, that really um, wow. was memorable to me because the fans were just so emotional. And to me, that that was always something really special about the Descendant series is how much people find themselves in these films and how um, personal it is to them. Ken, Ken, what what would success have looked like to you before the first film was released? Right, you had some measure in your mind. Okay, if we get this many people to watch, then we had we put on a good, successful product. Mm -hmm. But of course, I'm sure it exceeded all expectations, even in your mind. I'm sure you got you, you can think big, but this is huge. What would success have looked like after that first film? I think that that you know I, I believe that imagination can create reality, mm -hmm. and. Uh, Along with some hard work, focus, and determination, but but um, I kind of imagined it. I saw it, yeah. and and I knew that I needed incredible partners who would show up every day, you know, and and that 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 would have a chemistry and and a connection with each other, and that would uh, 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 that 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 would participate with me on 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 on, on my vision. That, that there was a built-in audience that I'd already found with High School Musical. And, and I felt that this was the, the right project to bring to them and that, that it would awaken them, it would excite them, it would draw them in. Uh, and even some of, and, and, and this was like a new generation too, I mean, of kids that hadn't even grown up with High School Musical that I was thinking, I don't think things have changed that much since High School Musical. I think kids still love musical storytelling uh, um, and uh, finding authentic, you know, finding people that, that could bring an authenticity mm -hmm. to these characters, that could make you believe that they really existed, that could find themselves in them. All of that, I just felt was in front of me. It was all there. I saw it with Dove and Boo Boo, you know, and, and they told me Boo Boo was an impossibility. You're not going to get Boo Boo <laughs> through it. No, they yeah. did. I mean, I'm not trying to embarrass you, but they did, and they told me I wasn't going to get Cameron. And they told me, Dub, wait till you meet Dub. Dub is probably the most exciting actress we've ever had on this channel. Mm. And she came in the room, and after one reading, I was like, oh my God. Oh. You know, I, and, and so one after the other after the other. The wait, why did they tell you you couldn't get Boo Because he'd already done a lot of feature work, you know, he, and, 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 that, and because <laughs> his role in this wasn't, you know, like the number one character I was like yeah but it's a it's a wonderful role for him and 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 having been a fan of his ever since he was a youngster I was like he could take this and really turn it into something magnificent and he showed up oh so boo boo they were saying you were too big of a deal for this <laughs> is that what they were saying okay <laughs> well Disney, that's that's Disney thought Disney it said. might have been out of, out of okay. the, yeah they, they <laughs> thought you're not going to get him and I was like let's just Give him an invitation, and he came in, and he didn't come in once. How many he came times? Came in a lot. Of Eight times. times? Yeah, what? and I, yeah, I, but honestly, like just <laughs> when I when I heard Kenny was doing it, it's like how could you not want to be a part of that and work with Ken? I mean, and Dove in the audition room helped me so much. Like literally, I don't think I would have gotten it if it wasn't. I wish no. we'd had cameras in that room. That was very in the sweet other room. room. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. The answer yeah. to that question though yeah. is this: you know, Cameron and yeah. Sophia yeah. and China mm -hmm. and Mitchell. And Boo Boo and Dove and Brenna and Sarah and Jedediah and uh, Dylan. That's 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 what I you know, I knew that if I had that, that the story was there. Mm -hmm. Herod, the children of heritage characters, mm -hmm. the Disney characters that we've all grown up with and are beloved, and you know that we're going to get to create the children of those, you know, the the, the, the those villains and and and, and those characters. And I was like, get the right cast, the right partners, yeah. 
and and we can nail this. And now, did all of you feel a little pressure there? Because you, I know they're the <laughs> children of these villains, mm -hmm. but these are the children of some pretty important yeah. intellectual property of Disney that have been around for a long time. You, mm -hmm. you don't want to mess this up. You can do your own thing, but mm -hmm. these are some classic, classic characters, yeah. the villains at least. Did you all feel some pressure to, ooh, we, we have a legacy now that we need to continue on in our own way? Um, I would say yes and no. Right. Because no one had seen our world that yeah. we were creating yeah. and that Kenny created and, you know, the writers. So, I mean, in the sense of coming from, like, knowing the history of your parents, I think, you know, it was very important. And, but at, at the same time, we were, on, and that's kind of what the movie's about. Yeah. Is really discovering who you are and not trying to, like, live through other people and, you know, be your parents or be their parents, I should say. Yeah, and I would say, like, I mean, it, I actually can't remember. I think Maleficent with Angelina Jolie mm -hmm. came out while we were filming the mm -hmm. first movie. Oh, wow. And I remember talking to Kristen Chenoweth, and we both went, okay, we're not seeing it, right? No, we're not watching it. <laughs> yeah, we were yeah. like, we're not going to see it because we don't want to be influenced yeah, cool, by anything right. else. And, yeah. and exactly like Boo Boo said, I think I remember in the first film, you know, that was a big question was, are you scared to ruin it? Mm -hmm. And we were all kind of like, no, because... It was so its own thing, mm -hmm. and, and our world with Kenny and, and with Disney and, yeah, with our writers was so love-filled and so supportive that I, I honestly just felt, I know this sounds like a PR answer, but I honestly just felt so excited mm -hmm. to make it up as we go along and organically mm -hmm. find it, because when you have a safe space, all of the best parts of you can come out, and so I knew, I knew that whatever was going to happen was going to be the right thing, and and it was going to feel really good. And they also had a process. They had a, they had a, we created a space in, a, in an entire period of time mm -hmm. where we came together every day and where they could explore and experiment and, and take chances and be fearless and, 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 and find the sort of way to build. Yeah, uh, yeah. You could watch them come to life right before your eyes as a director stepping back and observing their work with each other through improvisation, through scripted material, through the choreography, through the music, and through just watching them be together. As mm -hmm. you know, there was something happening in that room that was just undeniably great, uh, and 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 you know, coming to life right before all of us and I remember at the end of every day I mean we left so high yeah. so excited so believing right, each time right. every movie yeah and I think one of the great things too that Kenny and everybody did was we'd have like a month of rehearsals beforehand oh. that's and we were dance dancing so we're like sweating together and like really like learning together and vulnerable together exactly yeah, yeah. and that really helped bring us all together and it helped us I feel like in the dancing you for me personally, I I remember when we were shooting Rotten to the Core. <laughs> <laughs> I remember this. I remember, like, watch. I back then I really didn't like watching anything back because I just it made me feel very self-conscious and I didn't like it. <laughs> but I remember watching this one part, and I'm in the thing and I'm watching it, and there was a part where I did a dance move. I was like, whoa, that's like the character. Yeah. And then I was like, that's <gasps> that it. That happened to me like, too. That's it. Like for some reason, like right there, yeah. That's yeah. so strange. That I totally yeah. forgot about that. That happened to me too. Because you yeah. used to show us stuff back, and it was yeah, like you also yeah. believe that they had a history from the first movie of meeting them. You, you, the, and, and that 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 happened because they came to know one another. They came to understand each other's little idiosyncrasies. They, <laughs> they, they messed with each other. They <laughs> picked on true. each other. They she became a natural leader yeah. in the room yeah. and yeah. on screen. You helped him in the uh, audition oh. room. What was that about? I feel like, it's so yeah. funny, I feel like we've only half told this story like five times. Yeah, you go for it. Basically, <laughs> basically, it's very sweet. <laughs> Boo Boo was very quiet, and yeah. you know, um, I wouldn't say you were nervous. Were you nervous? Um, yeah, I get nervous in auditions. Yeah, he gets so nervous. I was definitely nervous, yeah. Um, and he was very <laughs> quiet that day, and it, was it you or was it, it might have been Gary Marsh, who's the head of Disney Channel, who came out, and this is like five and a half years ago, and he said, okay, we really like Boo Boo for this role. He's very quiet and shy. <laughs> Can you please go into the other room and just like hit him with pillows or scream at him yeah. and like get him Literally, to do jumping jacks, like jumping anything. around. And so I did, yeah. I got, we went in the other room, like this tiny little room and I was like, get on the couch, <laughs> yeah. we're jumping up and down. And I was like, I was, I was hitting him with pillows. <laughs> we were like making faces at each other. I think other. I tickled you, yeah, like we like met that day. Every, like, that this was, was this first, your first meeting. Yeah. Yes. yeah. But the thing is like, <laughs> I'm, I'm the worst, I'm so overwhelming. My personality can be quite overwhelming. <laughs> 
And so I was and like, I was completely I, I know, I was like, Gary, this might be going the opposite direction of what we want. I might be scaring him. Um, really? How did you receive that? This, this no, crazy amazing. person you just met I was hitting it. you with pillows. And yeah, really I wanted to do the movie. So okay. it's like, yeah. of course, like, okay, we're doing it. Yeah, I don't, I don't know. It's amazing. We, Thank you. We, yeah, we, we got pumped up together. We did, yeah. Okay. And then we went and we nailed it. Okay, so after that, I assume that's uh, the start of a lifelong friendship. Yeah. If that's how you yes. meet. We're, we're bros now. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're brothers from that point on. You know what? It's so funny. We actually didn't get really like close until the second film, I would say. That's true, yeah. I feel like in the first film, we were, we were just like, um, we were both really quiet. Yeah. And then it was like the second film. From then that's on, true. we were like brothers. How do you go about, or did you at all? Did you get lucky? <laughs> Or did you try to, okay, this person's good for this role, this person's good for this role, or did you think, okay, those two would probably get along? How, how do you go about developing what I clearly see here? They, they've been yeah. sitting here all this time and touching each other almost the whole time, holding hands, and she's messing with his face. I mean, you can just tell they're close. Oh, they are, yeah. How did you figure that out, or did you get lucky? Well, I think that there is luck, hmm? uh, but there's instinct as well, you hmm. know, and... I mean, I met Boo Boo and his dad walking on the street when Boo Boo yep. was 16 years old. Wow. Yeah. And, I, and I stopped and I put on the brakes and I said, do I turn around and go out, go back and ask who that is or do I just keep walking? And I said, no, I go and ask who that is. Wow. And I turned around and I ran and I said, excuse me, excuse me, <laughs> you know? And Boo Boo yeah. was already working, he was singing, he was in a band, he was working, <laughs> but I, I didn't know who he was. And, 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 and I said, I'm a director and a choreographer and I do a lot, of, a lot of stuff in TV and film. We knew. Who is this? <laughs> yeah. And and they were so lovely, so sweet. And 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 at that moment, right there, we decided we wanted to, we were mm -hmm. going to find a way yeah. to do something together. And so, and then I watched Boo Boo over the years, and I and, and nothing had come before me that I had the opportunity to. And then when this came to me, I I said Boo Boo Stewart, and that's what I, I told you. They said not going to happen, yeah. um, but I pursue. And, and based on my instinct, and 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 then you know Gary, you know who I admire so much and respect so much, who's been so successful at the channel for so many years, said, "Wait till you meet Dove. You're just not going to believe this girl. I mean, she has it all." And it was true. And and then I saw Cameron on a television series called Jesse, yeah. and and I, I I was hell bent that that kid was going to play Carlos, and they said he's not available. And he's going to be starring in another movie of his own. And, I, and so I snuck a call into his agents. And I, I mean, I was terrible. I was like a demon. I wanted that boy. And, you were and a so, villain and, kid. And, and really, we look far and long. I mean, Mitchell, can, Mitchell Hope came to us. You know, he was quitting acting. He was going to get a regular straight job. He decided that nothing was happening with his career and that he needed to get out there and do something to contribute. And his agent convinced him to do one more audition and she wouldn't bother him if nothing came from it. And he sent us this audition of him like in shorts with a tank top on, <laughs> sitting on the end of his bed and he ended up becoming our king. Um, that wow. we, we looked everywhere and we looked endlessly. Sophia was at the 11th hour. We must have seen hundreds of girls before Sophia. So we take our time and we put them together and, and, and you feel the chemistry, you see it, you sense it really early on, you know that there's something there in the room that's happening that you can build on and that shows promise. But Kenny, are you still chasing people down in the street? Yeah, I do. You still do that? <laughs> Not that I chase them down, it's that... It, you it, said you stopped the brake, you pumped the brake and ran Well, after. we passed one another. We did, we passed We, we, we passed one another. Yeah. You know, it's it's like, you know, are you sh two ships passing? Yeah. Or are you going to mm -hmm. put your ship in reverse and catch up to the other ship and make something happen? <laughs> that makes Kenny great. That's really what it's yeah. about for me, is that don't waste an opportunity. Life is short. Don't be shy. You, you, have, the, you have the star now in the Walk of Fame. Congratulations. <laughs> that's a big deal. Very big deal. Oh, come on. Um, you have to have a heck of a career to get one of those. And where does Descendants fall in that story oh. career of yours? Yeah. <laughs> I'm so proud of, of these years. So proud of every day. Uh, 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 I mean, you know, Gene Kelly yeah. uh, gave something to me, a gift. The first night that he invited me to his home to have dinner with him, he took me under his wing, and, and he wanted to help me. He wanted to mentor me. He, he saw something in me, and, and, and he, you know, he, did, he gave me many gifts. He, he taught me his, 
you know, ho whole way of designing choreography for the camera, and and um, so many things. But but in the first night, uh, uh, he said, what, "What are you up to? What are you doing?" And I started to tell him about a workshop I was doing, and he said, "What's the raison d'être?" And I thought. Raisin bran was the closest thing I could come to. And I said, let me answer that the next time I come back. Let me think about it. And I called my buddy who speaks French and I said, what is raison d'être? And he said, reason for being. What is the reason for being? And, and, and I thought about the project and I thought, I don't really feel like there's a great reason for being at the center of this project. Mm -hmm. So I went back and I said, you know what? There's really no important raison d'être. This project, and all projects that I seek and, and, and choose to participate in. This one had such reason for being, the, the themes that live in this, that swim throughout the, the, this story. In all three movies, the, 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 the empowerment themes, the themes of, of Im, the importance of, 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 of making sure that every child has hope and, and, and that you don't take away their, the possibility from them and that, that you don't determine who someone is because of where they live, but you determine who someone is because of the choices they make in their life and, and where they, all, all these things, you know, uh, um, gave me reason to wake up every morning and reason to go to work every day and, and, and then to have these people there to share in the experience of like telling the story has made this one of the most worthwhile projects that I've been involved in in my entire career. Do the times that we're living in, yes, did they have an influence on weaving the narrative that you have in the first, second, and third film now? Yes? Yes, and that the Disney Channel stood behind them and that our writers were fearless enough to put them on paper. What were you trying to get at? I think just fair, I, I, so many things, but I mean, wouldn't you say, you know, fairness, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's like what Cam Cameron was all about, yeah. what Cameron's whole life was all about, you know, was, you know, promoting goodness in the world, fairness in the world, justice, equal opportunity, justice, yeah, that that's all there. And that was just like, and, and, and in this world right now, they're so divided and, and, and that it just seemed like the perfect project to put out there, yeah. you know, uh, and, um, and, 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 and for me, I think for all of us, it gave me reason to get up every day. Yeah. And no matter how beat you were, no matter how tough the day before <laughs> was, and, and there were many, right? <laughs> yeah. You know, yeah. you just did, you shook it off, yeah. and you slapped some water on your face, and you <laughs> got back in there because you knew, knew that there was purpose and reason. I want to turn, you said, and, and I've, I've read the story, and you told it a little bit here, how, how you went after Cameron. Yeah. Uh, why did you have to have Cameron? <clears throat> instinct I just and watching him on that show mm -hmm. you know I mean I just he well the character of Carlos is this child who is the son of Cruella Deville right and 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 is filled with fear and uh, and hopeless and kind of lost you know and, and his, his only connection to anything is this posse of kids mm -hmm. that he hangs out with and and, 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 then, and, and then I knew that this character was going to grow and become more and, and gain confidence and, and, uh, and courage. And, and I just, I, I wanted someone, and he was our youngest character. Mm -hmm. And I just, I wanted to make sure that we had someone that we could watch grow right before our eyes and evolve right before our eyes in a big way. And watching Cameron, I just felt that he just, he had that. He had this incredible talent and ability and, and that there was just something so delightful and exciting about him, you know, even when he was standing still, mm. <laughs> right? He was yeah. bioluminescent. Yeah. He was lit from the inside out. You all have seen the finished product, the final, the third? Have you seen the whole, the, the film yet? I've seen a really, really early version without CGI, yeah. Okay. Uh, and have you? Yeah. Um, not the whole, not the whole thing. When are you all going to see? We're going to see it tonight, tonight actually. Tonight. All of us together. Yeah. Um, how is that to see scenes now, um, with Cameron in them? I mean, really rough. Yeah. yeah, rough. Yeah. I haven't really watched any of the stuff online. Just no. I mean, I think that we're all, I think that we're all thinking that. You know, I think it's going to be really hard. 
um, but beautiful. Yeah. It's going to remind us of everything we don't need to be reminded of is that he was brilliant and he's no longer with us here. Mm -hmm. And so that's a hard thing to face. I, for me, mm -hmm. it is. Um, it's not where I'm putting my mm -mm. attention no. right now. Yeah. I think that, you know, I, I think Cameron is kicking us in the butt and yeah. <laughs> saying there's work to do and, you know, you're, yeah, you know, Who? you really love me. You really care about me. Yeah. <laughs> then keep this going. Exactly. Keep this going. But I yes. think it's gonna it's gonna be tough tonight for sure. You know, because it is in a way kind of maybe it's kind of saying goodbye to him as we as we remembered him as an incredible film actor. Who or what over the past several weeks has helped you all through it? Um, I think yeah, each other. Like we so actually uh, Dove. Uh, Cameron, Sophia, and I have a group chat we've had for a really long time, <laughs> and we check in with each other, and I don't know, we've all just have really been there for each other. The cast, or everybody who knew Cameron has come even closer, and it's been a very special thing. You met Cameron when? Oh, gosh. Yeah. Yeah, I, uh, we used to dance in the same company, like, he was literally like this tall, probably. <laughs> he played Toto. <laughs> in our Wizard of Oz dance production. <laughs> I was like a monkey in the... In the That's uh, my favorite thing <laughs> for you. In the jungle, I don't even know. But I yeah, so I, I've, known, I've known him for a very long time. But you um, met as a dog and a monkey. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, we didn't, we didn't become close until later, but because there was a little bit of an age difference. But gosh, yeah, he's... Sounds like he's like a child, I guess. <laughs> um, I never had the pleasure of meeting him. Um, I've been with ABC Disney family the past five years or so, but I just, I never had a chance. I know we've done some stuff with him at GMA, but I never had a chance to. So uh, I've read about him. I've seen some things you all have said about him, but as I sit here now, tell me about this kid. Um, describe him for me as someone who only got to see him in film. Um, that's, that's so hard because yeah. He is such a wonderful, like, he was just Cameron. Like, literally, it's just Cameron. Like, he was the person you would always ask for, like, if you needed to talk to somebody. Mm -hmm. He was always there. And he was that person for everybody. Yeah. You know, he was that guy. He loved art and creating. And the world. And the world. Yeah, the world. And humans. And helping. Life. And, and I know we're, it sounds like we're describing, like, this, like, ultimate, like, Other world, <laughs> person, he was. But it's really true. Like, yeah, it's the truth. And Cameron is, it's a, you know, even even when he was around, is the hardest person to put into words, you know? Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. When he walked into the room, the light changed and the energy shifted. <laughs> and uh, I, I'll tell you, how, you guys know this. I, I got a lot of eyes rolling at me because, I, you know, I would say, okay, let's take it from the top. I want to see it from the top the whole piece now, and, the, and the, mu the music would start, and then I would just look at Cameron. And then the whole piece was over, and, and I realized I didn't look at anybody else. And I would say, <laughs> one okay. more time, <laughs> you know? And it was like, they, they knew okay. that, that because I, I gauged the truth of what it was that I was looking at off of his execution. Yeah. He told me if it worked or it didn't work through his execution. Mm -hmm. um, he really did. He lit, lit up the room. There was a center of, when he wasn't in the room, you knew it. And when he Something arrived in the room, you felt it, <laughs> yeah. right? Yeah, no, you're and, right. And, and, and I don't personally remember any day ever in three movies, ever, ever, where he wasn't in like a great mm -hmm. place. Yeah. Yep. He just always came in with this enthusiasm and, and excitement and ready, ready mm -hmm. you know, to, to work and to be the, you're creative. It was, it, it, he, it's extraordinary. Yeah, if, if we could all be more like Cameron, even 10%, I think we would all be better humans, that everybody. Goes, goes for me too. Yep. Have you all, um, have you all thought about that now, um, now that he's gone? I mean, you, you said something that I think we could all use. You were talking about this to me early and I was applying it to things going on in the personal life at this point. Like why waste an opportunity, a moment, hmm. why let one go by? Have you all now, through this experience, do you find yourselves changed people 
yeah. um, in a lot of ways in, in your normal day-to-day -day interactions with people or in just what you do? How have you changed, not just from knowing him, but actually now losing him? You said something to me when we were at the, uh, the service, the celebration of life. We were talking a bit. Um, Cameron's family had a lovely uh, celebration of his life that we all got to go to. Um, it was my first time seeing Boo uh, in a while. And you said something to me when we were painting, because we found ourselves in a corner painting. Um, and uh, you said you were like, I am so clear that I need to be better at being like a, a part of my relationships that I've yeah. formed. Like I need to spend more time with my people. Mm -hmm. I need to tell them I love them. And, and I think that that's kind of like one big beautiful lesson that we always take away from grief is um, how important our relationships are to us and, and um, how much love there really is there and, and how much we want to actually be a part of it while it's happening mm -hmm. rather than look back and, and regret you know, not spending every moment with the people that we love. You you put out a, some gut wrenching social media posts mm -hmm. uh, that were really really difficult to watch. Um, but you said it was you got to a point where you thought it was necessary to. Yeah. That was a part of your process. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I um, I've I uh, I have my own personal relationship with grief, and you know, I think you all learn. Everybody knows that everybody has a different relationship with grief and. Mm -hmm how you process is incredibly singular and you just have to allow yourself to do that however it happens for you. Um, and I wasn't sure I was going to post because um, I, I, don't always, I don't always think that social media is you know, the most healthy for, for your mind, especially if you're in a fragile state and this is something that's so personal to everybody who knew Cameron. Um, but at the same time, it's a very singular situation because it's a personal loss for those who knew him and loved him, but it's also public yeah. and it's professional. And so many people who grew up watching Disney Channel feel that it is also a personal loss to them, and, and in a way, it is. You know, um, you know. So I, I, I felt that it was something that was um, maybe maybe had a possibility to be cathartic for mm -hmm. myself and maybe for the Descendants audience. Mm -hmm. Um, and I also think that there's extreme healing that can happen when you become very uh, public and honest about your feelings. I think that some, some kind of magic can kind of happen and, and it can make you heal. How tough did it get for you guys in those moments maybe? You're, I know you had each other, but just how dark and deep of a place were you in in your own individual moments at I'm times? I'm 69 years old. Yeah. You know, and um, I've, I've, you know, been alive long enough to, to have witnessed some pretty tough stuff. This, this was as tough as it gets. And, and I felt that there, the, I, I was illuminated in, in, in a way through this because I didn't realize that I had as deep a place for pain to come from that the shock and awe of this unfathomable idea of losing this beautiful soul with such promise to this world could possibly be real. But at the same time that I was going through that, you know, I honestly felt, you know, Cameron kind of pushing me out of the dark and forward going, you know, make something, then make something of me, then mm -hmm. carry it forward. And don't focus on trying to define what what you're feeling mm. about the loss of me and start figuring out how you're gonna keep me alive through the goodness that you can be as a person. And, 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 and so this foundation has come into existence that we're all putting our attention into, you know, with this foundation in his name that provides young people creative and artistic alternatives to violence and negativity and, and that also uses resources and philanthropy to push forward you know, uh, uh, and make positive changes to the world. And that's, as a 69 year old man, I feel that, that that's, my life has told me, put your focus there. Put your focus there and carry this young man's name forward in, in all the days of your life, in, in, you know, in the best, in the closest way that you can 
to the goodness that he, he brought to this place. 69-year-old man, 20-year-old kid taught you something. He was telling me, get out of the dark. You've got work to do. Keep me alive. Move things forward. What are your expectations now, your hopes for Descendants 3, which uh, we're only a couple days from, but I mean, at this point, it's it's wildly successful, the trilogy, we can argue, it's not going to tank or anything, right? So, um, but what if it does, it's because you just said that. Yeah. You just Wait. jinxed you it. it. <laughs> but what I'm saying here is, you know you have that built-in audience, they can't wait to see it. Um, so it's not really a measure necessarily of numbers at this point. I mean, sure, Disney, but whatever, fine. We all work for Disney here in this room. But it's not a matter of that measure. What is the measure of success now with the legacy? And people, they, they walk away satisfied even, you might be hoping for. Is that, is that the thing that you're smiling at? That's, that's what you want. They want to you know satisfy what the, in. What, 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 I mean, we all know this. I mean, they come up to us in person or they write us, mm -hmm. you know, uh, um, and, and they say, thank you. Yeah. I'm a different person mm -hmm. because of you. Yeah. You've given me, you've given me the confidence, you know, to be fearless and to move forward and to not not hold back and 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 you know that that because of you and the character that you brought to life in in this series, that I'm a different person now, and 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 I've seen a lot of kids come out of the dark because of these movies. You know, and, and in the past, be, w with High School Musical, I've had kids come back to me, graduated out of university, saying I would have never made the choices that I would have made had you not been there in my childhood. What? That's why we do this. Yeah. There's something to give. It's not just to entertain. It's something to walk away with. You know, something to walk away with and to hold on to and to be able to incorporate into your life, you know, and make it a better place to live in. Yeah, I, I mean, I would say I actually I feel the same to add on to that, the same kind of tone. My two favorite um, quotes about art and film are um, universalities in the specific and <laughs> nobody comes to the theater to see you, they come to see themselves. Oh, right? I love that. And, um, and you can apply both of those to all pieces of art everywhere. And I think what's so magic about Disney Channel, comma, Descendants is that the relationship that the fans feel to the content is so personal to them and it's so their own it's like you know when you give up a book it's no longer your book it's it's the reader's book and you can read it entirely differently based on how it applies to you and your life and and these movies are so um sensory i always say kenny's direction is so sensory and you could watch 10 films and one of them could be his and even if you didn't know his work, he'd be able to say, was that one his? Because they're so different. And what he puts into it is this little extra human magic. And so you see all these bright colors and these big dance numbers and all this emotion and the chemistry between the cast and all the kind of romance that's going on. And you know, to someone who's never seen it, they might be like, wow, that's a, you know, it's a big, it's a big production thing, but it's actually quite intimate, the experience that the fans have watching it. It doesn't mm -hmm. seem um, fantastical, it feels grounded and it feels personal. And I think that if we can leave our, our audience with this third film feeling that we've answered all their questions, which I think in terms of script we have, mm -hmm. and if we can leave them feeling closer to themselves through us, then that's success. They feel represented. Yeah. Right. They see themselves. You said it. They see themselves. And, 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 and they see their potential through the potential that you're showing them yeah. in, your, in, in the characters. And, and, and they just they connect. They link. They link in. They're locked in. They'll come back to see these movies over and over and over and over. Um, and I think that it, I think that they serve them in 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 a, in a higher kind of way. You know, again, you know, we, we we hope to entertain. We hope that they enjoy the choreography. We hope they like the songs. But there's a greater hope that we have. All right. Last couple things here. Um, does he still have it? You still dance in front of him? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. This guy? Oh, still got it. Okay. Come on, any Just opportunity. Check it. Seriously. He's okay. up and doing his magic. Oh, okay. He's... I had a little help from Jamal Sims on this one. <laughs> okay. You know, we amazing. had a great choreographer that came in that, 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 that worked with me and worked with the kids who he's... just so... Cameron was just flipped out he in was. love with this guy. Yeah. Um, but, but he's uh, dancing around every chance. <laughs> yes, oh, he's dancing yeah. around. Okay. Yeah, yeah. He, uh... he knows he still has it. Oh, oh yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's got that magic. Surely you yeah. all have a cell phone video of this somewhere. Yeah. It's got to exist, I'm sure. right? Okay. Yeah. We can get into that later. <laughs> uh, 
<laughs> it is a funny thing that kids, I mean, five, six, and up, again, you, I'm not throwing your age out there, to, but you were throwing it out there. 69-year-old yeah. guy. But there are five and six-year-old kids who might not know your name, but they have seen something you've designed. Mm -hmm. They've danced to a, a number that you have created. There's probably no way in your career you thought you'd end up in this spot. Well, you know, I'll tell you that I'm 69, yeah. <laughs> and I'm fine with telling you that I'm 69 because it's true, yeah. but there's this 14-year-old kid that still lives inside of me, yeah. you so know, that true. makes a That's lot of noise. The first that thing makes I a say. lot of noise. <laughs> <laughs> you, know, he, you know, he does. <laughs> keep doing it. Let's keep doing it. I'm like, oh, come on, give me a break. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I think that the, it's that. You know, I grew up in the theater. I started working as an actor when I was a little boy, and I've never lost my excitement or enthusiasm for what it is that I do yeah. and and I think that's that that kid is just still very very much alive and 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 and, and, and you know when I try to pay attention I I mean these guys like I said these guys are partners and what they bring is so vital to the the, the, the end results of, of, of these movies they've given so much creative input you know I, I I call on them you know and and we don't just put things on these people hmm. We call on them and we invite them and, 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 and sometimes steer, mm -hmm. but they are really, really creative, creative people and have, and, and have or, or, or otherwise, these, these, these films would not relate as well as they do to young people. And it's because of, of these intelligent mm -hmm. and, and creative individuals, Sophia, who's not here with us, yes. and, and so many others. Well, yeah. I, th I think, you know, but you, we bring what we bring because you, you set bring it out of us. The, the standard and the bar is so high. So it's like, we, Kenny's like the most lovable man and you don't want to let him down. <laughs> Literally, That's we're like, we have to do it for you Kenny. Can, like, you we, could know him like, for like on, five years and then yeah. still the choreographers will be like, okay, Kenny's yeah. coming in tomorrow. And we're like, oh, <laughs> oh my God. Like we had to like, yeah. and okay, we're all everyone like, okay, actually like Kenny's really practice. Like, come on, come on, we get it together. To dance. <laughs> yeah. And who would you go to to Cameron. go to the corner of the mirror? Cameron. 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 Yep. He's Every just, time. Yeah, Kenny's coming. Cameron, quick, over to the Cameron. corner of the mirror. What was that move? What was that, Kenny, what was that move? One as well, he made wow. it. Yeah, and every time, like, I know that this is, I've said this before, but seriously, like, we will be in high pressure situations mm -hmm. doing something on live TV, and I'll feel a hand go, and I'm like, oh, I'm in the wrong place. And it's Cameron <laughs> choreographing, and like, I'll, yeah. I'll turn back to him and be like, Cameron, what am I doing? And, and, he, and, and he's like, and I'm like, okay, okay, okay. Like, for wow. five, nearly six years, Cameron has like had all of our backs. He's yeah. the youngest. Now, I, you, I right? will say like one of my my buddy Dave and like he knew Cameron a little bit, and he kind of he said something else. From like, your band. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And uh, he just he said something about Cameron that was just so spot on. He said Cameron was invincible, hmm. like literally invincible, like mentally, hmm. so strong, physically, just in what how he presented himself, just invincible. Like and nothing could touch him. As like, a spirit. Oh, yeah, his spirit was strong. Like something really bad could have happened and you would go to Cameron and he would just make he would he would not even be phased. Like yeah. just invincible, just a warrior. Do like, you all remember yeah. and uh, maybe you've gone through it in your minds a, a lot, but do you remember the last conversations you individually had with him? Mm -hmm. Yeah. What were those? I mean, it was pretty normal. Yeah. You know, we um, we all expected to see each other a lot more. Oh, we were expecting to see each other a lot. For a lot more. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. You know, because we had a lot of press coming up that we were meant to be doing, um, and we always do it together. He was supposed to be here with us. He would have been here with us today, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. On the couch with us here, right? We have to have a pool party because mm -hmm. the last thing he said to me, um, and when I was, we were leaving, um, um, looping, um, he hit the window, <laughs> rolled down the window, and he said, since you've refused to organize a pool party, <laughs> Boo Boo and I will do it, and we'll let you know when it's going to happen. <laughs> so I, we need to have a pool party, Boo Boo. He's right, though, you, you oh, know, right. that I was a little lazy in getting that organized. This lazy. was the last, <laughs> yeah. this was the last, you yeah, tried yeah, The last thing was he was like, it's time yeah. to party, and yeah. since you're not going to arrange it, Boo Boo and I will take care <laughs> of it, we'll give you a call. It was at my house, we'll let you and we'll know let you know when, when it's going to happen. <laughs> Rubo, do you remember the last time? I mean, the last time, um, yeah, I mean, the last time I saw him, we were actually just 
we're at the Radio Disney Music Awards, which mm. is that's very recent, and yeah. um, we were just planning to hang out and like make videos, and we just liked creating stuff together. And they were like two puppy brothers together. Oh yeah, yeah, he's uh, like my little brother. I was oh, yeah. told that you all always wanted to do your press together. You you asked to do your. We did. Oh, yeah, yeah. We, we, we actually <laughs> begged and sent a video to someone on our knees. <laughs> 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 So always try to claim territories too. We, yes. We'd come up to each other conspiratorial yeah. and be like, oh, "Do we want to do Paris? Okay, you yeah, and me have yeah, to do exactly. Paris. If we're doing, we have to go tell them right now. Okay, Cameron, what what territory are we doing this year? <laughs> um, yeah, the last conversation I had with him, he was going to come over to my house. And he was going to see the new house. You guys so fed off of one another, just like you and <laughs> Sophia. You know, I mean, they just had this brotherly rapport. It was so beautiful to observe these kids. Mm. I did too. I like to step away and. Yeah not get in that space, you know, and, and, and just to watch them and how they excited one another and inspired one another and helped one another. And all the way through this five and a half, almost six years, Boo Boo and, 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 and Cameron, um, they, they pushed each other. <laughs> we really Yeah, we and got kept each other it. humored, too. No, I, I always, like, I think in, in Descendants too, like, one of them <laughs> hair makes, she was like, I don't even know where you guys are, but I can hear you laughing. <laughs> very constantly. We just, he was like a little brother, you know, I don't know, it's just, he's the man. You're gonna miss Let's, him, yeah. you're gonna miss him. I don't know, you all aren't the, the professionals, the counselors necessarily, but what do you hope, or how, how would kids who are, so many young kids who are fans of, and you were hitting on this earlier about, it's a, it feels like a personal loss to a lot of fans out there. How would we tell, or how should we tell, or how can we help kids right now through Cameron's loss, through Descendants 3, I don't know, learn to deal with loss, learn to deal with pain, learn to mourn. I had my first big loss when I was eight, mm -hmm. and then again when I was 15. And one thing that I took away from it, being somebody who has lost somebody, you know, quite young, and, and in a very, both were very sudden and very dark, mm -hmm. um, and very close to me, and I have always felt that it shaped me and that it made me um, a bigger lover, a deeper feeler, uh, a more intense connector. And I think that the best thing that we can do for children in, in the time of grief, just coming from a, a child who was grieving, um, is to not shield them from it. I think that this is a part of life and I think that the earlier we can learn to deal with it in a, in a healthy way and speak about it, the, the more prepared you are for life. You know, loss does not miss anyone. Everybody will, will experience a loss in their life. Um, and I, I think that as absolutely heartbreaking as this one is, it is a personal loss for so many young people who watch Disney. Um, and I, I truly think the best thing we can do for them is to remember Cameron exactly as he was in, in the most positive light. Um, but not to avoid it, because um, just as much as there is life, there is its opposite, and, uh, and, and kids are smart, and they can handle it, and they want to be a part of this. They want to, they, they're looking for a way to feel this as deeply as it feels to them organically, you know? Can, can, Cameron said something. He said, we all go. He said, uh, um, but what you leave here has to be bigger than you. And I think it's important for us all to make every beat count, mm. every moment count, yeah. you know? None of us have a license to be here forever. We don't know what, what you know? And, and, and so, and, and, and I also, you know, what I would say just, you know, is, is that, that in, in, the dis, in the disappointment of this and in, in, in the sorrow of this and in the confusion of this, uh, um, stay strong and, 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 and like we have, you know, talk to people, yeah. you know, yeah. gather with friends, talk it out, you know, and, and, um, and, and let it inspire you to be the best version of yourself that you can be because that's, that's what Cameron was. And to love each other harder. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, to stay connected. And, you know, I've never, this was the first time I ever dealt with anything like this and something that, uh, you might have said it, someone said it, but they said, um, just to be okay with any thoughts that yeah. you have. It's fine. Like, because when you're grieving, like, you think things that I, I've thought, things I've never thought before. Yeah. <laughs> you know, like, what's happening? Who is this person in there? Yeah. And, uh, but that's okay. 
Like it's okay. Like it's it's part of the process. Like it's fine. Yeah, we were texting yeah. in our in our group chat just our daily like, are you okay? Mm -hmm. Are you eating? Yeah. How's everybody? Yeah. And um, and yeah, I was it's, I was saying that that's like the, I think the most important thing for a human experiencing something that is so something we can never fully comprehend, right? Um, and and the most important thing is to give yourself so much room mm -hmm. to be wherever you are exactly while you're there. Mm -hmm. Because that's the process, and that's how you can get from absolute shock and heartbreak, and and this feeling of being lost in in something, to then getting to the other side and making it about his life, and making it about his legacy, and bringing forward who he was rather than what we lost. Can you not help but have Descendants Three feel like? I mean, it's a celebration of what you all have done the past five years, but it's also feel like some kind of a tribute or some kind of a mm -hmm. dedication mm -hmm. to Cameron mm -hmm. now. Is that fair to say? And to the family that he came from. Yes. Man. My God. Such a strong family. Whew. I mean, you know, you, we're talking a lot about Cameron. Well, you know, we come from some place, all of us, and he comes from such a strong family, such a beautiful family, such a loving family. Victor and his mom, his dad Victor and his mom Libby and his sister Maya, they were best friends. Yeah. Cameron and Maya were very, very best friends. And, and um, you know, uh, we, we tribute that, the strength of family, the love of family, uh, um, family that supports their children's dreams and goals and, 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 and listens and hears. And, and uh, yeah, you know, the, yeah, um, we, we I just want to say we love you to the Boyce family and for, thank you for giving us Cameron uh, um, and, and that Cameron was as special as he was because of where he came from. Yeah. And, and uh, we love you and we know this is a very difficult time for you, but uh, we're here. Yeah. We're here. We're here for you. And we're here to, to uh, um, continue Cameron's name forward in, in, in the light and in the most positive way that we can to bring better change and make this place a better place that we live in.